It is time now for another GAX moment brought to us each week by a good friend, Paul Borges, and the great, great crew at PB Collectibles. Go to pbcollectibles.com to get that special card, baseball, or piece of memorabilia. This week, we're talking about the biggest bust. Every year, there's talk and speculation about the next phenom. Uh, the baseball world is littered with phenoms that unfortunately became phenomenal busts. David Clyde, Greg Jeffries, Matt Bush, Brian Taylor, Joe Chabano. The list goes on and on. There is one player, however, who stands out as the bust of all bust. Clint Hartung was a strapping 17-year-old pitcher hitter coming out of high school in Hondo, Texas. Newspapers had the Hondo Hurricane touted as the next Babe Ruth and Christy Matchison all rolled into one. Clint could do it all. He was hitting 400-foot homers as a high school player and mowing batters down game after game. Clint was scouted heavily, and the consensus was that this kid was certainly going to be a shoo-in for the Hall of Fame someday. When the war broke out, Clint went into the Army and played on different semi-pro teams in the military. During that period, Hot Tang batted 567 and was 25-0 and 0 as a pitcher. And some good semi-pro, actually semi-pro military teams. The New York Giants could not wait to sign this phenom. They assigned him to the Class C Northern League, where he batted a lofty 358 with 12 home runs, and was 3-1 and one as a pitcher. Both fans and the press were convinced that Clint was going to lead them for years to the promised land of the Giants. After signing in 1947, Hatang walloped a home run in his first at-bat intra-squad game. He had a pretty good rookie season going 9-7 and seven, and batted 309 in uh, 94 at-bats. From there, it went south. It seems that Clint was not a very good outfielder and had a great deal of difficulty tracking fly balls. They would bounce over his head. They'd bounce in front of him. Just couldn't feel them. And then for another reason, some other reason, he was having a great deal of difficulty hitting a major league curveball. The Giants decided to take him off the field and just keep him on the mound. In any event, Clint could not cut it. He went back down to the minors and again looked like the Bambino. When they brought him back up, he looked more like Bambi than the Bambino. The star began to fade for Clint, but he managed to have a very vanilla seven-year career with the Giants. He wound up 29-29 and 29 as a pitcher and had a lifetime batting average of a lofty 238 with only 378 total at-bats. Cliff finally walked away from the game at the age of 31 after spending a couple of more years in the minors. Uh, and again, he killed it in the minors, came back up, and that was the end. The faded Fion went back to Texas and got into the oil, oil business. He never liked to discuss his baseball career. Like David Clyde, Greg Jeffries, and the rest, Glenn Hartang faded into the baseball sunset peacefully. And that's another Gax moment. The Great American Collectible Show is available to watch on YouTube and Facebook, or you can catch the audio anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast, with new episodes airing every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.